Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis Legacy. The sorority secrets of the goddess next door are revealed in this all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis Legacy in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. There are a lot of black Gen Xers who are extremely anxious about this upcoming documentary regarding the Freaknik 1994 event that is coming on the Hulu streaming service. And many of these black men and women are anxious because they fear that there are going to be events at Freaknik 1994 that will expose them and damage their professional and personal lives, and others are afraid that they will be exposed to their children as hypocrites because they were participating in sexual behavior at that event. Now, while many of these brothers and sisters are emotional about this upcoming Freaknik 1994 documentary coming on Hulu, they aren't really aware of the subtle politics transpiring around them regarding this documentary. Because what the producers of this documentary want to do is they don't want to make a documentary about the Freaknik 94 event. What they really want to do is promote another piece of Doc Uganda designed to promote anti-black racism. Now, this Freaknik 1994 documentary looks like another piece of Doc Uganda similar to what we got with the so-called documentary revolving around R. Kelly. Now, what I, what, the reason why I call these Doc Ugandas is because I don't believe that these are documentaries. No, I don't believe that the so-called documentary about R. Kelly was a documentary, nor do I believe that the documentary about Bill Cosby by Kamau Bell was a documentary. No, they weren't documentaries, they were docuganda. And the word docuganda is a fusion of the word documentary and propaganda because basically this is a piece of propaganda that is anti-black designed to look like a documentary and designed to deceive the individuals watching it into believing that they are watching a documentary chronicling the events that are transpiring as related to an individual or in this case the Freaknik event and what it's designed to do is make you believe that you're getting to see a documentary with people making observations about the event when in actuality it is a piece of propaganda designed to promote anti-black racism right in front of the viewer and designed to make demonize a black person or in this case the Freaknik event. So the docuganda again is a piece of propaganda disguised as a documentary but it doesn't have, it, while it looks like a documentary on the outside, it is a piece of propaganda designed to promote anti-black racism to the viewer. And what these docugandas do, again, is they just present black people in a completed slanted way. And in that slanted piece of propaganda, you see a black person or a subject like Freak, the Freaknik event not presented in its proper context. So these docugandas are something that white supremacists weaponize to promote their anti-black racism. And while people are just caught up in the sensationalism as related to seeing these sordid details being revealed, they cannot see how these, uh, these docugandas are used to go out here and demonize black people and demonize things that we do like this Freaknik event. Now, I find it interesting that you, you have all these people focusing on Freaknik 1994 because they chose that year specifically because that was one year after the entire narrative as related to the entire Freaknik event was changed by white supremacists. Now, the Freaknik event was actually started in about 1982 by black women at Spelman College but many of the people on the Hulu Doc Uganda won't talk about how this event started in 1982 by those black women at Spelman College 
or about how the Freak Nick event was inspired by a Lit Cheek song, Le Freak, and how the entire event was just a party that was supposed to be for students at HBCUs to be able to celebrate completing their year's work at on the semester. They won't talk about that part because that doesn't fit white supremacy's narratives because white supremacy wants to demonize black people by saying that most black people who go to this freaknik are these sexually promiscuous and perverted individuals. However, that was never the case for the freaknik. Again, this was an event started by HBCU Spelman College by black women, and it was a party, again, for HBCU students, and mostly the HBCU students, when they had this event, it just came and went. People ate food, had a good time, and listened to music, and this event was such a positive event, it went on for years to the point where Spelman College could no longer remain liable for the event and had to disengage from the event because it went from 15,000 students to over 300,000 HBCU students. And because they could not maintain liability for the event, the HBCUs had to stop associating and sponsoring the Freaknik. And the Freaknik went from being sponsored by HBCUs to becoming a non-HBCU event. And when it became a non-HBCU event, that's when the Freaknik's entire narrative was completely changed by white supremacists in 1993. Now, in 1993, private individuals decided to start sponsoring and hosting the Freaknik in Atlanta, where it usually was, and that's when the Freaknik went from being associated with the Lit Cheek song, Le Freak, to becoming associated with the freakiness of sexual promiscuity. And that's when the new people who were running the Freaknik decided to breathe brand new life into old stereotypes by making the Freaknik associated with the hypersexualized narratives that are presented about black people. And they also decided to invite Luther Campbell of the rap group to Live Crew who one year before had just released a song called Me So Horny, which featured these hypersexualized images of black women and had these raunchy and just disturbing sexualized lyrics. And with the invitation of Luther Campbell of Two Live Crew to the Freaknik, and the entire narrative of the Freaknik changed and it fit the narratives that white supremacists wanted people to see regarding the Freaknik because according to all of those white racists, they believe that when people, black people go out here and congregate at an event like the Freaknik, they believe it's a place where people are participating in lots of sexual promiscuity. But that was never the case for over a decade and a half as related to the HBCUs who ran the Freaknik. No, those events of HBCU students basically came and went. However, in 1993, you had all of these individuals who were not affiliated with HBCUs. You had a lot of pookies, a lot of thugs, a lot of baby mamas coming down to this Freaknik. And them associated with Luther Campbell basically changed the entire narrative of the Freaknik from a after semester college party to an orgy of sex and violence. And it's that orgy of sex and violence that makes many of the white racists very happy because this fits into their narrative of what they believe black people behave like and because this fits the narrative of what they want to see about black people this is why the entire narrative of the freaknik changed and this is where the hulu documentary turns into doc uganda because it's very interesting that the that hulu's documentary is focusing on 1994 but doesn't, I believe, will ever focus on the years before 1993 because I believe they targeted 1994 for a reason and they targeted the year 1994 because this would 
ag agitate a lot of the Gen Xers who went to college at that time, one, and two, they could use that one year to frame the entire narrative of the Freaknik event, taking it completely out of context. So what they're trying to do with this Doc Uganda is what they're trying to do is reframe Freaknik as a party that is just filled with a lot of black men and black women participating in the stereotypes of the black brute and the black Jezebel, which come from the antebellum South. What they want you to believe is that many of these, many black people go to this freaknik lusting after black men and black women and looking to just be able to have sex with just about anyone. This is the narrative that the white media wants to present regarding the freaknik and this is what they want to push and promote by focusing only on 1994. Again, this is what Doc Ugandas do. Doc Ugandas take, I take events out of their context and they make them to be slanted to fit the narrative that they want to promote. And this is why Doc Ugandas are extremely dangerous because you believe you are watching a documentary when in actuality you are watching a piece of propaganda that is made to promote anti-black racism and demonize the image of black men and black women. And that's what's being done here with this Freaknik documentary. What they want to do is say that people go only to this Freaknik, only to go out here to just go out here and find partners to have casual sexual encounters. They want to make it look like black people only know how to lust after each other and that they go to events like this to completely wild out as related to expressing themselves sexually. Again, completely just re rewriting the entire narrative of that event and not showing you it in its proper context. That is what that the network Hulu is trying to do, trying to go out here and get black people just titillated as related to what they themselves seeing some sort of racy or sexual content as related to the young brothers and sisters whereas it's got the older brothers and sisters from generation x my generation extremely anxious and both sides are not critically thinking about how they are being manipulated by the white media the older gen xers aren't thinking about how the white media is trying to revise history to make it fit white supremacy's narratives and the younger generation isn't thinking about how they are being manipulated into believing that sexual promiscuity among black men and women it was normal back in 1994 when this was never the case at all no the white supremacist puppet masters were manipulating things to try to reframe the narrative of Freaknik ever since 1993 when the HBCUs had disengaged from the event and once the HBCUs disengaged from the event, the entire narrative of the event was changed. And that's the, that's the thing that many black people aren't looking at because they're not thinking critically about the subtle politics transpiring around them. No, they're not understanding that the white supremacists, whenever they find one of our events that we create, what they do is look to try to reframe the entire narrative of that event to fit their old racist stereotypes because they want to live in their smooth world and because they want to live in their smooth world where they believe black people are violent, black people are sexually out of control, and black people are just completely loose, they go out here and project their ideas onto black people and they find their black bootlicks and shills like Luther Campbell to go out here and promote these ideas and ideals that the white supremacist wants to see in their media. And this is why they want to make their Freaknik 1994 um, 
doc, doc Uganda. They want to make this Doc Uganda, again, to influence the black masses to believe that this is completely normal behavior for black people, when in actuality these are old stereotypes that racists have had since the inception of this country because they have always believed black people were savage, black people were violent, black people had no control over their sexual urges, and creating a freaknik Doc Uganda to bring those points to the table. This is what they do when they have their media, and this is why it's important for black people to watch new black media, because new black media is a place where you can go out here and get objective facts like I'm presenting in this video, because new black media is a place where you can go out here and get the what you're supposed to get in a documentary, what you're supposed to get in documentaries is a counterpoint that shows you not only the subject that people are presenting, which is this Freaknik event, but shows you all of the event in its entire context. That is what you're supposed to get in a documentary. A documentary is supposed to chronicle an event or an individual and show you the good and the bad. It is not supposed to be used as a piece of propaganda like it has been in the case of R. Kelly with the surviving R. Kelly documentary, which was propaganda meant to demonize R. Kelly, and the D Kamal Bell um, documentary on Bill Cosby, which was designed to de demonize Bill Cosby. And again, it goes back to a point I made many years before, you have to wonder where the source of these documentaries is being financed because again it's those who control the money control the media and those who control the media control the narrative and you have to wonder where their money is coming from because every it seems like we're just continuing to be bombarded with these pieces of document so-called documentaries which are just anti-black racism repackaged and these pieces of anti-black racism repackaged in a documentary are designed to present us with a slanted picture of black life that demonizes black life and makes it look like black people are sexual predators. That is what this whole um, Freaknik documentary is basically designed to do, designed to present black men and black women as sexual predators because that can be um, reinforced by what was presented on the grill by your Mark Lamont Hill, a bootlick who wants to go out here and say, oh, these Freaknik events were all about black men looking to participate in sexual violence and sex crimes. I mean, this man sat there and said, oh, I went to this Freaknik event in 1995 or so. Again, another year completely out of the complete context and trying to say, oh, it was all about black men participating in sexual promiscuity and sex violence and sex crimes, and not looking at the bigger picture of the event or the year that he's going out here making these claims about. Now, the years that he talks about, 1994, 1995, I myself was in college, and at that time, the, there was something called the O.J. Simpson murder going on, and you would think with this controversial murder of a black man alle alleged to have murdered a his ex-wife, a white woman, that a event like a freaknik where if there was any sort of sex crimes going on, that would have basically pushed the Simpson story out of the way. That would have possibly happened, again, if, if your um, Mark Lamont Hill's claims of all of this sexual violence were substantiated. If this was the case, again, with the O.J. Simpson trial going on, you would have seen this basically become a major story, but this is why you have to be careful about watching this Doc Ugandas, because again, these Doc Ugandas do not give you any sort of context of the time, do not give you any sort of context as related to the history, and that's because the individuals creating them, one, do not do their research, and two, if they do do research, they slant everything to omit many of the core details as related to 
whatever event that they're covering. And what they're doing again with this whole Freaknik 1994 is again giving you a docuganda, which gives you an, a narrative that is designed to demonize black men and black women for expressing themselves sexually and went to demonize black male and black female sexuality. And most importantly, they really want to go after black male sexuality to present the image of a black man being a so-called sexual predator. This is all, again, more anti-black narratives created by black bootlicks who support white supremacy. And that's why you have to be very careful about the media you imbibe because much of the media you are imbibing it could be poisonous to you because while these individuals with these docugandas want to make you believe that you're watching a, a series of facts you're not really watching any facts at all no what you're watching is people twist the truth and twist the truth to fit their lies regarding black people. And this is why docugandas are extremely dangerous, because a docuganda, again, presents facts in the form of pro and twists it to make it into propaganda that fits many of these racist narratives while brainwashing a black person to believe, oh, everything I'm watching is true. But nothing you're watching is true because everything is completely twisted and it's completely twisted to warp you into buying into old racist stereotypes. And as you buy into these old racist stereotypes about black people, you see the worst about yourself and you believe that black being a black brute or a black Jezebel is the norm and that fits the white supremacist ideals for black people and they get you to buy into this and buy into these lies. So when I looked at this so-called Hulu documentary, again, one of the things I realized was that this was not a documentary. It is yet another docuganda designed to assault black people. And these docugandas, again, are the newest weapon that the white supremacist uses to go after black people's image and black people's culture and black people's lives. What the white supremacist does is find a black bootlick, go out here, get them to film one of these docugandas, and then they release the docuganda. Matthew believing that this propaganda is a documentary, but this is not a documentary. This is anti-black propaganda, and it's anti-black propaganda that allows them to insidiously promote their anti-black racism at a young black audience and make them believe that what they're seeing are actual events when you're just seeing a distorted picture of those events from the lens of the white supremacist and because there's a black face behind it like the producers of surviving r kelly or D or kamal bell who created the cosby documentary you're believing you're watching an objective film when all you're watching is somebody's racist and subjective views about black people so these docugandas again you have to be careful with them and instead of quivering and being scared of somebody revealing a bunch of skeleton bones on black on the black gen xers who were at this freaknik we need to be digging up the graves of these white supremacists and exposing them and the wizards that are behind the curtain going out here trying to put up an illusion in front of black people we need to go out here and as, as part of new black media and expose these individuals who are trying to manipulate the black masses the same way that the wizard in Oz tried to manipulate people into believing that he was some sort of grand wizard when in actuality he was just nothing more than a con man putting up an illusion. So this is where black people really need to really understand that you have to stop focusing on your fear and get some courage because it takes courage for those to go out here and stand up to these type of propaganda artists because these propaganda artists what they want to do again is get you upset and scared get you upset and scared and get you out here looking to watch this piece of propaganda and as you're watching this piece of propaganda you're not understanding how it's having an effect on the minds of the youth 
It's designed to make you believe, oh, this was what Freaknik was all about. When, when it was originally, again, an event by black people, it was never about that. No, it only became about that when the white supremacists and their black bootlicks like Luther Campbell came in and changed the narrative. And that's the whole story that you're never going to get from that Hulu propaganda documentary docuganda. Now, if you want to pick up some of my positive black fiction on the SJS Direct Imprint, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Hayes series, and the books of the Spencerella Trilogy, and my sorority novel, The Thetas, and my vampire novel, Eternal Night, you can find all those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them in digital format at other online booksellers, like Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And you can also find SJS Direct Books in paperback format at other online booksellers like Barnes & Noble, Walmart, and Target. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can send a donation to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, 1987. Learn lessons about life and teenage love in the 1980s with this coming-of-age John Haynes story. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, 1987 at online booksellers everywhere.